press the A button. I how's it going, everyone? My name is Flip Ribbon, and welcome to Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. <laughs> I, I've never played these games. Obviously, I have heard about them because they are insanely popular, and I've recently been getting into anime. So I thought, hey, this shit, this shit's my jam, and I really like Death Note, <laughs> especially. So I assume that Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is the first one, then Justice for All, and Trials and Tribulations. I get it. I get it because it's a trial. All right, <laughs> let's play the first one. Episode one, the first turnabout. Let's do it. Hello. <laughs> Quite the omen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, a classic. <laughs> Beat her over the head with a golden globe. Happens to the best of us. Damn it! Why me? <laughs> Imagine getting murdered and you're just like, Damn it! I can't get caught. Not like this. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, boy. Someone like... Him. Who's him? <laughs> I'll make it look like he did it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a classic. <laughs> that's what most criminals will try to do. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Great. I, I kind of hate that it auto-scrolls. It's very interesting. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Yeah. I, I, oh, hey, girl. Oh, hi, Chief. <laughs> yeah. Whew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Really, not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. Not everyone can. <laughs> it says a lot about you. And your client as well. Um, thanks. <laughs> yeah, is that is that a compliment? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way- Oh, me. <laughs> I want to help him out any way I can. That's me. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. I'm slipping Jimmy. He's Chuck. It's over! Oh, yeah? My life! Everything! It's all over! Eh? <laughs> Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah. It's him. <laughs> Death! Despair! Oh! Yeah. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! <laughs> Sounds like he wants to die. <laughs> yeah, so it does. Uh, yeah. <sighs> it's me playing Disco Elysium. Nick! Yeah? Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Butts? Your name is Butts? I. <laughs> Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! Uh, what? What's wrong, Larry? <laughs> oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished! <laughs> I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? I mean, <laughs> you, from your words. Aw, uh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. <laughs> Just talking to myself. The newspapers say it was you. Or am I talking to him? No, I'm not talking to him at all. I'm just doing a light from Death Note thing where I'm just like, I'm not going to respond for about four minutes, if that's cool. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case, it's a fairly simple one. Yeah? Murder? <laughs> Murder is never truly simple. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Yep. Larry Butts. What a name. My best friend since grade school. Sick. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> God, dear. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd say this is a bit more than trouble. <laughs> One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. <laughs> yeah. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. Yeah, I'll take your word for it, because I don't know him. Then I owe him one. Which is why I took the case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Yeah, if he doesn't fucking confess before you have a chance there, Phoenix. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number two. Oh, shit. Sorry. I should have drank my coffee before coming. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> the, um... Defense is ready, Your Honor. I forgot what my title was. 
Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes your honor, I'm uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Yeah, I hope so too. Th thank you, your honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Y yes, your honor. <laughs> Hand shaking, eyesight fading. Oh my god, is this nervous? This test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. You got it. <laughs> Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant is indeed Larry Butts. Right? It, it's Larry Butts? <laughs> I think. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, your honor. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Bitch, I don't know. Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. I did that too. <laughs> it's, wait, uh-oh. <laughs> 1612, one year after Magna Carta, as if I could ever forget. No, no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. The victim. Of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. I, I see. I see. Oh, what's her name? It's Cindy. All right. I see it. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? <laughs> just a lawyer in court. Just like, presses the R button. Remember to check it often. Do it for me. Please. I'm begging you. All right, Mr. Wright. Who's the victim in this case? It is Cindy Stone. <laughs> Cinder Block. Cindy Stone. <laughs> Cinder Block. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. <laughs> Correct. Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? Bludgeoning. She died because she was uh, hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. <laughs> this is so bullshit. It's like it's like clear bias in the court right now from this judge. Just like I don't know if you're really good enough to be a lawyer here. <laughs> Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed. That's for sure. <laughs> well then, first, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Mm, yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts this into evidence. Statue added to the court record. <laughs> I didn't have to do that in his voice. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Uh-huh. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. I right, let, let's do it. Uh, statue. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Good thing I opened the court records. <laughs> I would never have known that. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Mm, the prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, he, can, he was confessing before the trial even started. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, th I think this can only go one way. <laughs> He's literally like twitching. Like, this can only go well. <laughs> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. <laughs> we were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. <laughs> yeah, but, uh... Did they all die? Yes, <laughs> yes they did. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or, or seeing me e ever. <laughs> What's it to you anyway? <laughs> Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies, all of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Right. 
Why wouldn't you assume that the guy she went to Paris with murdered her? <laughs> Dumbass. All right, whatever. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. <laughs> the victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. B d daddies? Sugar? <laughs> yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude, I want to do that. <laughs> we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. I mean, he'll probably just be like, I still love her, she was awesome. Yeah, there he has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Uh, wait and see what happens. Stop him from answering. What do you think of her now? I mean, what would be my grounds for objection? There's like nothing, really. Speculation? No, because it's how he feels and he's asking him. I don't think there's any objection I can really make. And I feel like the fucking judge is gonna abscond me if I stop him. <sighs> Fuck it. Might be better not to get involved in this one. That's not really my logic, but it's fine. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, no way! That cheating she dog, I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I mean, we were. <laughs> I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. He didn't know until this moment. Like, he just... He just demonstrated he didn't know about any of this until right now. You even did that in your questioning when he was like... When you were like, what do you think of her now? Now that you have learned this information. So, his motive was that, what? <laughs> he had fucking psychic powers? Yes. Right. Oh, boy. This is so not looking good. Looks fine. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. What? Uh-oh. He went. <laughs> what do I do? Have him answer honestly. Stop him from answering. God damn it, this is so rough, because the evidence will show in the end he wasn't the killer. But Jesus, they could actually nail this on him right now. Stop him! Stop him! <laughs> I'll send him a signal. <laughs> Lie. Like. A dog. What the fuck? Uh, um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. <laughs> the classic. You don't remember? Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> yeah. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. <laughs> Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. This is so silly. Let me see your witness. I know he's the murderer. Like, this is so bullshit. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Penn, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad, but also, I think I can get him on cross. <laughs> on the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawin to the stand. Selling newspapers. This guy? This guy's selling newspapers? What the fuck? Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please, tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Yeah, please. I, I would love this. Yeah, witness testimony. <laughs> I love this. Witnesses account. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, dipshit. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because I left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. <sighs> 1 p.m. Hmm. Larry, 
Why didn't you tell the truth? <laughs> because I told him to lie! <laughs> God damn it. I can't defend you against a testimony like that. I mean, yeah, you can. You didn't remember. <laughs> There's nothing you can do, really. I mean, you can prove it, and the jury can be like, ah, oh, he was full of shit. Ah, uh, damn it. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, <laughs> I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. My perusal. Blackout record. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, doesn't really add up much yet. No, Mr. Wright. Yes. Er, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Fuck yeah. <laughs> cross-examination, Your Honor? <laughs> All right, right? <laughs> All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have, have, must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? But, but, but how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face! <laughs> um, okay. Open the court records with the R button, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Alright. I can't, I can't. Oh. Cross-examination! Witness's account! What's up, you little bitch? I was going door-to-door, -door selling subscriptions, when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Hmm, what is press? Uh, uh, nah, oops. Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. I did not mean to do that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He just seemed strange to me. That's all. Like he was mad, and yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal freeing the scene of the crime. The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course. What the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So, what happened next? You don't get to say that, bitch. I'm on cross. I thought he must be in a hurry, because he left the door half open behind him. Uh, see? Oh, this sucks. This sucks, because I can't look at the court evidence before I present it. I just have to say, OBJECTION! <laughs> and then if it's wrong, then I look like an asshole. I mean, yeah, okay. Okay, whatever. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. <sighs> That is a little odd, isn't it? That is a little strange. It's not your house. It's not your apartment complex. It's not someone you knew. A little weird. Hold it! <laughs> what gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't that only human to want to peek? Not really. We climb mountains because they're there. It's the same thing. Truer words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. I wouldn't have. Why did Payne cut him off so quickly? So, you looked into the apartment. What happened then? I'm telling you, it's fucking sus. Then I saw her lying there. A woman. Not moving. Dead! How did you know? Oh, can I please look at the evidence? Okay, I can look at the evidence before that. Okay. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. That's fucking sick. Uh, time of death, 731. 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood due to the blunt trauma. Wait, wait a, wait a goddamn minute. So you said that you called on the phone that she was dead at 1 p.m. Is that, is that what you said? I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in the apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Interesting. Objection. Objection! You're a lying son of a bitch! You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. For certain. <laughs> Frankly, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> I love this. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that. 
Uh, oh yeah? This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. And my, you know, my client merely forgot that he went in the house. <laughs> no. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sowett, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, I uh, well, I, gee. That's a really good question. I was using the other attorney's voice, I'm sorry. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Mm -hmm. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. It's very true. So what the fuck were you doing there at 1 p.m.? Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Is that how that works? Because I, I believe it's called perjury, judge. But okay. <laughs> Fucking jeez, we're real generous, aren't we, your honor? Alright, witness testimony. The time of discovery. Let's go, dickhole. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. 1 p.m. looks nothing like 4 p.m. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Surely you're on the job, getting paid. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. I've got this one. He's so full of shit. All right. A taped program. All right, I want to press him a little on one of these. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time, probably coming from the television. Three hours off. I guess the vi victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was a left 1 p.m. Uh, damn it. This is hard. This is... The blackout! The blackout! Of course! Of course! <laughs> OBJECTION! STUPID SON OF A BITCH! HOLD IT RIGHT THERE! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <laughs> I love it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video! <laughs> I, uh, well... <laughs> the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sowett? No, I I find it quite puzzling myself. Uh, quite. <laughs> uh, ah, wait, I remember now. Mr. Sowett, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. They're actually judicially illegal, uh, your honor, but that's cool. You don't care. <laughs> it's fine. That and you seem rather distraught. <laughs> My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sowett. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Yeah. Once more, please. Hearing the time. Uh -huh. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it, of course. There was a table clock in the apartment. Wasn't there. Wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Huh. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Gladly. Ugh, he's so terrible. He's terrible at lying, but it's still a little tough to, like, discern what the lie is. Actually, I didn't hear it. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah. The murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Hmm. How would he know? How would he know? I mean, maybe we've already talked about it. Yeah, we definitely already talked about it because the judge on his little test of me was like, How did the victim die, by the way? I don't care that this could possibly fuck up the entire trial. Um, oh, son of a bitch. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Is it a clock, though? It doesn't say it's a clock. I would hope that if it was actually a clock, it would say so. Right? Right? I want to say right. I, wa I want to say that's right. <laughs> but I don't know. Uh huh. Objection! I'm not very confident on this one. <laughs> Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. 
Okay, thank God, thank God. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. Right, but then he couldn't have seen the time, because when you twitch the neck, it says the time. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yeah, definitely. Your Honor! There's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. <laughs> Clearly a contradiction. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. Knew the victim. Because he certainly went into the apartment. I can't prove he knew the victim yet. You're lying. You were inside the apartment of the day on the day of the murder. <laughs> oh yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. <laughs> I fucking love this. This is so amazing. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> you little bitch, Mr. Sawit. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. <laughs> Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Oh, really? What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Is it, though? Baseless. Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Why are you giving this guy so much fucking opportunity, judge? Did you strike the victim with the clock? <laughs> I, I, that, that day, I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard. No, I mean, I saw, I. <laughs> oh, no. He's bald. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It was him. I tell you, I saw him. He, he killed her and he should burn, burn. Give him death. <laughs> this fucking guy, am I right? Order, order in the court, I say. Your honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I better think through it carefully. I Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply examine the clock's batteries, ask the neighbors, try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here, in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? Let's do it. I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. <laughs> well, he is the thinker after all. <laughs> so, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? Hmm? It's 11.25. Three hours off. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Hmm? <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? What? 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 Are you a. Are you implying that either the defense or the prosecution or the court itself tampered with the clock to make it three hours slow? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! I, he's right. It's not tr He's wrong. How am I gonna prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence support to support your claim. <laughs> yes, your honor. 
No, I really don't lack anything. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately. <laughs> Are you dead serious? You're the judge! This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sowett. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! I almost had him! Damn it! Sorry, Larry. I failed you. No, I didn't. No, I didn't! There's nothing I can do about it now. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There must be something. Are you dead serious? Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Hell yeah, Mia! Get them all! Mia? I, I mean, Chief! Listen up. Right. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow. And think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right, right, mm-hmm. <laughs> can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes, I can, I can, she went to London. She went to London, right? W wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it, and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course, there is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha, huh. tough words, let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Not that one! Okay, thank God. It's definitely the passport, baby. Take that! Mm -hmm. Come on, motherfucker! The victim had just returned from abroad the day before the murder. Home from abroad. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home! That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. <laughs> Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? <laughs> Mr. Saw It. This fucking game's amazing. I am in love with this. Order, order, I say. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Did we do it? Well. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, er, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. <laughs> Classic. Very well. Mr. Wright, yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I am impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Hmm? Not guilty! Hell yeah, baby! <laughs> Fuck yeah. We're a star. Just a superstar, you know how it is. <laughs> and with that, this court is adjourned. Fuck yeah. What a start. God, this game is awesome. Turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house that day. Mm-hmm. Yep. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After we left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. Classic, but she came home. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Why does he have like a like a dot on his forehead? Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Really? Just murdered her dead? Come on, man. <laughs> You're a quote-unquote professional burglar. You fucking run away. She can't ID you. She doesn't know who you are. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court. Defendant Lobby, number two. Whew. Still can't believe we won. <laughs> right. Good job in there. Thank you, Chief. Oh, man. Oh, my stars. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battles in there. Thank you. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. Me too. <laughs> I've never seen the chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. <laughs> God damn it. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Jesus. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. <sighs> But, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. 
Larry, she was a... <laughs> nah, never mind. <laughs> she was a hoe! Anyway, <laughs> congratulations, Harry. Harry? Harry? <laughs> yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. Harry Butts. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. All right, Larry. Oh, no, I couldn't. Oh, you're just trying to mack on me, I see. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Uh, oh, hey. Yeah? Here, take this. It's a present. What, the court just give you that? Just give you the murder weapon? A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. Wow, really? I made one for her and one for me. Oh, cool. R really? You? You made this? Hmm. Well, <laughs> thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick, <laughs> can you believe it? I was so into that chick, <laughs> and she was just playing me for a fool. Do don't that make you want to just cry? Not really. <laughs> it makes me feel like you're a dumbass. Larry? <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> Are you so sure? What? I yeah, I excuse me? I don't even understand either. I think she thought quite a lot of you, in her own way. See, this is what I was actually gonna say. Like, so she had some sugar daddies. So what? Like, the fact she liked you and spent time with you even though you were a loser must have meant that she really did care about you. Quite a lot, Larry. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. <laughs> oh, I'm not just sympathizing. Really? Isn't that right, right? I love you, Mia! Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him. Huh? Oh yeah, right. Do I? What the heck is she talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Cindy's autopsy. Uh, the thinker. Uh, arrived from Paris. Electricity. I mean, <laughs> shit, dog. It's probably not her cause of death, huh? I mean, maybe just the statue. The fact, the fact that she kept it, right? X. Sorry. Take that. <laughs> just scream in his face. Check out this, Larry. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her, huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. <laughs> Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Mm. Well, make of it what you will. Mm. Hey, Nick. Yeah? I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. You're welcome, <laughs> Harry Butts. Hope that made him feel a little bit better. Yeah. I think it did. Right. Yeah. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. So I do. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. Uh-huh. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Uh-huh. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Never! Never surrender! Never secede! Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. <laughs> oh, damn, Larry! You got shut down! We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. <laughs> Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Bruh, is this the best day of Phoenix's life? And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. I'm pretty sure he's not gonna pay us. Unless he got the clock he gave me a... Hmm. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon gonna be at the center of another incident. Holy shit. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Are you dead fucking serious? The end. Don't you fucking kill Mia or I'm gonna have a real big problem. A brand new episode has added. been added. Oops. Uh, yes, please, please do. Right there. Thanks. That works. And with that, guys, I'm gonna end the episode here. I hope you really enjoyed. I fucking... Ooh!
Oh, I love this game. I love the writing. I love the stakes. I love the, you know, the, the, the art style. I love everything about this game so far. And I can't wait to play more of it. If you enjoy, please like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want in the world. Have an amazing day. I'm me. You're you. But I've got to go. So, peace out.